My name is Ken Early and I'm a copywriter here at Atomic Dust and we're going to be talking about how to stay in the lead with brand positioning. When you're in first place, it can be really difficult to really see the need to change. It's like when business is good, that's, you know, an easy time to kind of be complacent and let off the gas and kind of coast. But in fact, it's one of the best times to really start thinking about how you can put your competitors further in your rear view mirror and kind of make up ground. Because when you're really in the lead, it's like every other company is looking at you. They're focusing on you and how they can catch up. In marketing, there's endless opportunities and there's endless things that you can tweak and fix and poke and prod. And so it's really difficult to understand where to start. And Simon Sinek has kind of gotten famous for his video, his TED Talk, and his book called Start With Why. And to really sum that up, it's about knowing why you come to work every day, why your company is different than anyone else who's in your same industry. When you really get to the heart of what makes you different, it's not about beating your competitors by a penny or having a slightly better rating and just being a little bit better or a little bit faster. It's really about why your company does what you do. A lot of times when we interview our clients, we ask why you do what you do. What, why are you in business? And oftentimes we'll hear to make money when that's a really obvious you know, and right answer, but every company is in business to make money. So it's really about understanding why anyone should keep choosing you, why customers should stick with you as more competitors gain ground. And in today's market, it's even easier for competitors to try to make up ground against you. You know, almost every industry is seeing the importance of having a great website or having an, a, you know, a respectable social media presence. When it comes to branding, it's uh, easy to kind of divide things into huge overhauls or kind of in incremental changes. And I always like to look at larger brands because it's easier and they're brands we kind of experience every day. And if you think about Starbucks and how they've changed, you know, from their very first location that's still in Seattle with this big brown mermaid logo, you know, it's evolved a lot over the years, but it's still true to who Starbucks is. And that takes, you know, very small incremental changes over time to just stay fresh and stay in front of your customers and match who you are with what your brand looks like and sounds like. And then on the other end, you can also, you know, sometimes it is time for a completely new overhaul to refresh your logo and your brand and, you know, develop a new way to talk to customers. And I always think about Old Spice. Old Spice lately has been really, you know, in the news, I feel like on Ad Week or Ad Age, and they're just kind of popular because they've gone viral with a lot of their marketing. And, you know, through the funny videos that they make now, they look nothing like, you know, in the 90s when I grew up, there was this kind of nostalgic, old world, you know, fisherman's nautical brand with waves crashing in the background. And you never see that from Old Spice. And that's because they really looked at the product that they offer and how they market it and kind of revamped themselves. And so that's the key to starting with why. Once you understand what makes you different and the products that you sell and how you market them, if they don't line up, that's a good time to you know start fresh and start over. So a lot of times when we approach marketing projects, we like to talk to people in various positions throughout the entire company to really get a fresh perspective into who the company is and why they do what they do. And internally, it's great to take those same steps to really talk to people, talk to more executives or talk to you know people at every level in your company to get buy-in and really understand that they see the value in making changes in your marketing or in your branding and in your positioning. Because with those changes, you can you know, better communicate who you are to your customers. But it's important to really get a great understanding, kind of like this global picture of who your company is. Because it's easy to work, you know, if you're in the marketing department, you kind of work on marketing and work on selling the company every day. But CEOs think about different things and CFOs think about different things. But once you really get an understanding of why everyone really does love your company internally, then you can use that message to sell to consumers. So again, it's really important to get a good picture of the why behind your brand. Because when you're number one, you know, everyone else is gunning for you and everyone's kind of chasing you down and focuses on you. But that means that you have to look ahead and look to the future because you're the leader in your industry. So if you stop and let everything catch up to where you are, that's how you lose your top spot or you have to fight it off constantly. 
So it's important to understand the why and understand that if your company and who you are and why you do what you do doesn't match up with the products or services you sell, that's a great opportunity to make a change. And sometimes it's small changes, sometimes it's large changes, but either way, it's about lining up who you are as a company and fending off competitors and really making connections with consumers.